Good afternoon everyone, my name is Hannon Dempsey and I'll be presenting on my research topic e-learning in medical physics. I'd like to thank my supervisors for their expertise and knowledge into this project. What is e-learning? E-learning e can be broadly described as learning supported by digital tools and media. It can be split into three groups, synchronous e-learning, asynchronous e-learning and blended e-learning. Synchronous e-learning occurs in real time with an instructor leading the uh, classes. It usually involves webinars and video conferences and those Zoom calls we have all grown to know and love. Asynchronous e-learning puts, e puts the student in charge of their learning. They are able to pick the time, the place and how fast they learn or how slow they want to learn. This usually involves online videos and courses such as those found on YouTube or LinkedIn Learning. And finally, blended e-learning is a mixture of both. It is particularly useful when in-person classes cannot take place as we have experienced in the pandemic. But what are the benefits of e-learning? Firstly, e-learning is able to transcend geographical barriers. We are able to distribute and access learning from other sides of the world, and then uh, we are able to distribute what we know and learn from things what other people know. It is able to reinforce instructor-based learning. For example, if a student is unable to learn something in class or understand what they've been taught, they can go home, go on YouTube, find something that explains the topic in more detail. It puts the learner in control of what they're learning and how they're learning. As I mentioned before, they are able to choose where they learn and the, what they learn and the pace they want to go at. If they want to skip some content, they can. If they don't want to learn something, they don't have to. E-learning has also been shown to increase engagement. By offering animations and simulations, a student is able to better visualize what is going on. It also allows for quick and concise learning. This means that a time poor student doesn't have to spend hours going through a textbook to find what they're looking for. Topics can be separated to avoid confusion by overlap of information. And finally, e-learning adapts to dynamic fields. If something is changing constantly, we don't want to have to update a textbook and then republish it every so often. But why are these benefits specific to medical physics? Tabakov published a paper in 2008 explaining six benefits of using e-learning in medical physics specifically. Firstly, it allows for easy updates of content. Like I just said, e uh, medical physics is a dynamic field and everything is changing all the time. It allows for the fast delivery of material. It allows for interactive simulations. A lot of what we learn in medical physics is uh, based upon complicated physics concepts that could be better delivered using simulations and animations. If a student is able to visualize these, they are more likely to understand what's going on. Uh, images are also important in medical physics. Uh, being able to store images for educational use on a website is beneficial. Uh, a search function allows students to look up what they need and find it immediately without having to go through thousands of pages of textbooks. And finally, e-learning allows worldwide access. As I described before, we are able to broadcast information to the other side of the world. Go back. <laughs> um, but e-learning is yet to be adopted thoroughly in the medical physics community. If you've been looking for information on chemistry, biology, maths, or history, you may have come across one of these friendly faces on YouTube. But if you've been looking for e-learning content in medical physics, you probably haven't found anyone yet. Which brings me to the aims of my project. The aim of my project is to enhance the accessibility and quality of medical physics educational materials available both locally and worldwide. This will be done by creating a website of high quality educational videos that are tailored specifically to medical physics students. This will be supported by material based upon the ACPSEM TAP clinical training guidelines as they are the standard we use to educate medical physicists in Australia. By allowing, the internet will allow us to broadcast our standards to the world showing them how good we can be. Uh, there will be three main target audiences of these materials. Firstly, future students who may be undecided about whether they want to study medical physics. Uh, by giving them information, we can help them make an informed decision. Secondly, current students who could use these materials to study for their exams or complete assignment questions. And finally, medical professionals. This can include non-medical physicists who want to learn a bit more about radiation safety, or it could be medical physicists who want to update what they know. But in order to create effective resources, we need to answer the following two questions. How do we design materials that meet the needs of a wide range of students? And how do we effectively employ educational and psychological techniques to increase online engagement? This is my study plan. Firstly, I will be undertaking 
preliminary research in the form of a literature review, then I'll be planning the videos, filming the videos, publishing the videos, and finally writing the paper. Firstly is research. This will include e-learning research, multimedia research, education theories, materials design, student engagement, and finally, why are we using videos? As I mentioned before, I've already done most of this in the form of a literature review. Secondly, planning the videos. This will include what series they're going to be a part of. As I'll explain later, I'm, going to, I'm planning to have many different series of videos. Uh, what content will be in these videos. A script will then be produced, which will be fact-checked to make sure that everything we are portraying is correct. Uh, they will then be storyboarded so we know what's going to happen and when. And finally, images and animations will be planned to support the material. The videos will then be filmed in front of an engaging set. The types of videos that I'm planning to create are first-person videos, topic videos, and interviews. And they will be supported by hand-drawn animations using the iPad ad app CaliPeg. Uh, voiceovers will be produced when they're needed, for example, in first-person videos. And then background music will be created and integrated to support the content further. Then editing and publishing the videos. Uh, this will be integrating all the elements together, so the music, the animations, and the actual video. Uh, sound effects will be included to add an extra bit of engagement. Uh, the video will then be edited using Adobe Premiere Pro, which is available for free on the UWA computers. Uh, and then they'll be uploaded to YouTube and the UWA Medical Physics website, and then advertised through the UWA Medical Physics social media pages. Finally, writing the paper, which will include education theories, why we're learning e-learning, uh, how we're designing the lessons, how the website was made, the effect it's had, and a brief discussion on all of the above. Firstly, animated topic videos. These will be the main feature of the website. Uh, the topics to be explored are radiation protection, dosimetry, radiation biology, radiotherapy, and presentation research and communication skills, as these are the areas of knowledge that the ACP SEM has uh, said that students will need to become medical physicists. Some educational methods and styles to be used are shorter videos are better. The study by Gray et al. in 2004, 14, found that average engagement time of online e-learning videos was six minutes, and shorter videos performed considerably better than longer ones. The videos will uh, be filmed using an on-screen presenter who speaks in a conversational style, so the viewer is encouraged to respond socially to the presenter and that reduces their cognitive load, increasing the amount that they are able to learn from the videos. Active learning will also be encouraged by, because forcing students to answer questions makes them think about the answers. And the animated topic videos will be uh, made by the following procedure. Firstly, a script will be written, the on-screen presenter portions will be filmed, the voiceover will be recorded, uh, and this will give us amount of time that an animation will be needed to take place. And that will help us plan the animation, which will then be created. Uh, everything will be compiled together and edited. And then the video will be uploaded to YouTube, embedded into website, and then advertised through social media. Uh, secondly, uh, practical videos, which are the first person videos I mentioned earlier. These will be recordings of practicals that we undertake as medical physics students at UWA. Uh, they will walk viewers through quality assurance procedures and they will be filmed in first-person style using a mobile phone or a portable camera. Secondly, interviews. These will be, uh, allow researchers in the department and current students to showcase the work they're doing and what they're passionate about. Another thing that will be recorded are question and answer sessions with future students so we can answer the questions they might be wonder wondering. Uh, the status of this research program is Comet, which is an e-learning platform run by the ACP SEM. Um, unfortunately, Comet is not accessible to the general public, otherwise it would be very useful for us. Um, and it is only available to paying ACP SEM members and students currently undertaking TIA. Uh, Comet holds learning content methods of documenting their training and professional development materials. It is substantially different to the aims of this project. Secondly, we have Emerald, Emmett, and Amatel. Uh, this was Project Emerald was released in 1995 and featured learning content on uh, radiotherapy and diagnostic radiology. 
Uh, it was released by a group of m European medical physicists, including Tabakov, who I mentioned earlier with his six reasons of using e-learning e in medical physics. And it was used to promote consistency in training across the countries of Europe. It, the same group then released Amit, Amit in 2003, which featured modules on ultrasound and MRI. And then finally, Amatel, which was again released by the same group, but in 2008, which was an online encyclopedia where users were able to search up topics and learn a bit more about what they wanted to learn immediately. However, none of these resources have been updated since the release of Amatel in 2008. This means that the content has become outdated and that students are not willing to use a material that looks like this. <laughs> uh, it's obviously like, as soon as you see that, you think this probably isn't going to be factually correct anymore. So the aim of this project is to be a modern day em Project Emerald. It is to use today's current technology to meet the, the learning needs of students online. But it might have some problems. Firstly, there is no one size fits all approach to education. Every student has different educational needs and by balancing learning goals, student differences and the environment people are going to be learning in, we are able to optimise the amount they learn and the outcomes they get. There is also no one available online for a student to ask question for of except Google. Um, so by encouraging an online community where students are able to ask and answer the questions of other students, uh, both students benefit from one having their questions answered and then also being able to teach other students. Secondly, distribution may be a problem as the project will uh, probably require advertisement to get it out of the UWA community. Um, this advertisement will most likely be done through word of mouth. Um, but by making the resources eye-catching, engaging and short and also available on YouTube, which is the platform that most students use to look for materials like this, they will hopefully advertise themselves. Copyright also needs to be considered, especially in terms of the content and the music. Uh, the music will either be royalty free of websites such as Incompetech or produced by myself. Uh, also, the work of other people will be correctly referenced. This is also a good point to say that no patients will be featured in these videos to protect their confidentiality. Uh, time is also going to be an issue as these videos will take a lot of planning and filming and creating animations also takes up a lot of time. Um, if it becomes likely that we're not going to be able to get through every single topic that is planned, uh, the information will be prioritised, uh, in which case I believe imaging and radiotherapy will probably be the first ones released. And finally, fi finding a quiet, spacious filming location that has the ability to create and maintain a consistent set has been difficult and I haven't been able to find a location so far. Uh, this is a summary of my literature review uh, where I ask the questions, what is e-learning and why should we be using it? How do we design effective e-learning resources? How do we increase student engagement? And how do we distribute e-learning resources? Um, the following articles all explain different theories that fall into each category and were able to help me in my research that I will need to create e-learning materials. Thank you for watching. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, first of all, how will you measure the success of this program? <laughs> um, I think I have a separate one. Yes, um, I'm actually planning on releasing some surveys at the end of each topic. So, for example, at the end of imaging or at the end of radiotherapy and hoping that students are sympathetic because they're most likely also completing master's research and will complete them. Um, and some content uh, questions I'm planning to ask are uh, like, how well did you understand the content? How engaging did you find the content? Uh, have you learned anything? And then uh, what do you think could be done better? But another way of gauging how successful it is is using view counts on YouTube and also through engagement on social media. Uh, that will probably fall to someone in the department that has not been planned yet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you just have to find a good name for it. 
Yeah, I can't think of anything. I have one If you have any suggestions, feel free to bring them to me. Keaton? Um, that is something I'd really like to do, but it is not in the scope of this project. But I think it would be a great thing to do to help patients feel more at ease of what's going on. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> That would be great. That would. Yeah, hopefully funding will happen. I would love that. Uh, thank <laughs> you for the information. <laughs> of experiences where I've been trying to find something and I've just been met with a 40 minute lecture where the thing I need is somewhere in that lecture but I don't know where. Um, and most of the content I've found on medical physics so far has been that. So I think having short videos that have a very clear topic will be better than the content that's already online. Also more consistent from one presenter as opposed to many. I think it's more the fact that it's just not been covered consistently yet. So in one of my slides, eventually, <laughs> we'll get there. paper released by Tabakov who produced, um, he was the leader of the groups that produced Emerald, Emmet and Emmetal. Um, I think the simulations are actually what is probably going to be best for medical physics specifically um, as opposed to what it could be, like it's going to be useful in other subject areas but for medical physics the simulations that we don't currently have that we could have would be very beneficial. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, it's customising it to medical physics, but in terms of how students learn and the content, it's not that different from, say, physics or chemistry or even biology. Uh, I think the actual part of the videos that is going to be most um, it's like good for medical physics will be the first person videos, especially the QA procedures, because they are not really something that's undertaken in other professions. Um, and ha being able to show an audience what they'll see if they're being able to do it, I think will be very helpful. Can you them or are we going to get like yeah. Uh, I wish. <laughs> It'll probably be me. You can we can put like this fake or what is the name? You can select who would have your lecture. Take it. Thank you.
Thank you.